a post-apocalyptic roadhouse. Shut up and take my money! Steel Dawn's a 1987 sci-fi action-adventure film from director Lance Houle. The movie begins in miscellaneous post-apocalyptic desert wasteland. Our hero, Nomad, is meditating by doing a headstand on top of a sand dune. When sinus pressure feels like this. A bunch of mutants start popping up from beneath the sand. These dirty dancing fans will do anything to get an autograph. Maybe now might be a good time to flip over? Or now? What exactly are you waiting for? There we go. Just as quickly as they surface, they dive back into the sand. Only now, one of them has his backpack. This could have been prevented, you know. He grabs his backpack, pulls out a sword, and cuts the monster's arm off. He had a sword this whole time? Why didn't he just get up and grab the sword instead of continuing to stand on his head? The same people surround him to attack, but he easily takes them out. There's a running thing in this movie. Whenever Nomad's in a fight, he does a defensive role for no reason. After a nice long walk through the wasteland, he gets stopped by this guy. I guess gray studded leather is all the rage these days. Let me distract you with my baldness, and then Haichiba! Turns out it's his old friend Cord. They head to the tavern to get a drink. While in the tavern, nope, nothing shady about this guy. Cord shows Nomad a message he received. In the future, the English language has been reduced to webdings. Cord was hired to be a pissmaker? Peacemaker. In an area in the desert called Meridian. I guess taverns aren't too popular after the apocalypse, considering that they only have one table. Nomad realizes the drinks have been tainted and warns Cord before falling over. So here's where all the patrons have been hiding. Cord gets ambushed by the ruffians from Michael Jackson's Beat It video. In walks the villainous leader, Sho. This is starting to look like a Man of War concert. The two fight until Sho stabs Cord right in the jimmy. Nomad gives Cord a proper send off. Was his head covered in lighter fluid? To honor his friend, Nomad swears to help the village Cord was headed to. Nomad sets his destination to Meridian. This seems like some sort of clue about where I'm headed. Or I could just follow this giant set of train tracks. So he's walking, and he's walking, and wow, that's actually pretty awesome. Okay, back to walking. I haven't seen this much walking since Gone Home. Since you can't have a proper post-apocalyptic lone traveler without a dog, Nomad befriends this guy. Finally, he makes it to a small village within Meridian. Mom, look! There's a sale on hair crimpers! Nomad approaches, and everyone makes a goofy face. If closing the gate is your security system, it needs work. You come about the work? I thought you'd be bigger. Kasha offers him a job to help out on the water purification farm. What, did they lose all cups in the future? Now they have to drink from ladles? The head of security, Tark, lets Nomad know the rules. Nomad's helping out around the village and talks to Jux. Wait a minute. A traveler in the desert meets a single mother with a blonde son who's building a pod racer. Lucas! Nomad's trying to plant some vegetables. Those won't grow. You planted them upside down. Maybe someone should have told me that before I started? Talk. I don't know, is my hair big enough? The village heads out to hear a speech by this guy. Hey, look, it's Zoltar! Kasha tells the crowd she received a message that a peacemaker was appointed to protect them. That's great until Damnil shows up to tell him that he's still the boss. Then he knocks over their fire pit. He's less like an overlord and more like the douche at a party that tries to walk off with the beer. They head to a bazaar to get some supplies. Good to know the future stocked with Minute Maid orange juice. The 2037 model Hyundais are really weird. Tark picks up a new part for their generator and what looks like a few kegs. Tark fights some thugs that are trying to steal the cart. Tark's doing okay until they gang up on him. So Nomad rushes in to save the day. Roadhouse. Jux asks Nomad to teach him how to fight. Nomad drops some knowledge on Jux. Before you learn to fight. Is this going to be something lame like you must learn to love? You must first learn to meditate. Meditate, of course. Nomad teaches Jux how to meditate in the most impractical way. This seems overly complicated. Can I just do yoga? That night, Nomad hears a noise. Oh no! Someone scaled the waist-high fence. Their security was compromised by a stepladder. Nomad knocks out the bad guys, and then goes back to sleep. The next day, Beat it, son. Mommy has to make sexy eyes at Captain Abs. She gives him a bowl of what looks like vanilla pudding and a sponge for breakfast. Kasha shows Nomad the secret underground stream of fresh water. Still drinking with ladles. Kashi explains how she wants to create an aqueduct and irrigate the valley, so all the farms will have water. Since there's plenty of water, Nomad takes a bath to clean off his awful onion ball smell. 
Damn, Nils shows up mid-bath. What's the matter, never seen a grown man naked? You ever been to a Turkish prison? Damn, Nils tries to get him to join his team, but he declines. What is that smell? And now a montage of people doing stuff, and Nomad smiling. I really gotta read these scripts more. This movie's gonna give me permanent neck damage. Since he stands on his head better than any man she's ever seen, that means it's time for sex. I don't even know your name, but you've helped so much, so let's do this. The next morning... Your husband's dead. Ooh, smooth talker. They head back to the farm to see the place has been trashed. Nomad wants to go get revenge on Damnil. What do you say, Tark? <sighs> they head to Damnil's base. This construct looks like a giant version of McDonald's Playland. Yeah, Boone says he saw a dog on the plane by Kasha's farm. Hey, yeah, what did happen to the dog? They kill some guys and steal the water pump. Damnil's men tell him that Nomad stole the water pump. They tell Kasha who they got the pump from, and Nomad gets all the praise. But... I stole it too! What about Tark? Nomad tries to give him some props, but immediately stops caring mid-sentence. Tark's been helping out on the farm this whole time, and then this guy comes along and moves right in on Kasha. Tark's feeling unwanted, so he decides to hit the old dusty trail. The next day, Nomad goes to get some supplies. Okay, now this is what I was expecting from a future tavern. He finds Tark drunk and thankfully covering his male camel toe. Ah, no, he moved his hand! Nomad convinces Tark to come back to the farm. Is there some sort of nightclub up here? I guess colored saran wrap is the new hotness? Oh no, that wasn't water, that was the outside toilet! Nomad confronts Sho and they get into a duel. I am show. Me the money! He's winning, so his men cheat and knock him out. Tark steps in to help, but gets killed. With Nomad knocked out and Tark dead, they kidnap Jux. Kasha locks Nomad up and goes to reason with Damnil. Oh, finally! They left the gate open. I'm going to go poop in the kitchen. The lock is old and weak, so Nomad forces his way out. Kasha goes to talk to Damnil. Despite getting hit over the head with a shovel, Nomad swoops up and goes to rescue Kasha and Jux. Kasha holds a knife to Damnil so Jux can get away. Jux steals one of these things, but the bad guys go after him. Imhotep. Imhotep. Who wears a sword like this? Isn't that just asking to be accidentally impaled? Nomad jousts with henchman number three and spears him. Sandstorms are very dangerous. Nomad gets into the final battle with Sho. They want to get the most out of that flourish, don't they? Swords clashing... More unnecessary rolling. The fight's going on for too long, so Damnil sends the other henchmen in to kill Nomad. I warned you not to interfere! The two duel some more, and Nomad takes him out. The remaining henchmen give up. Damnil tries to kill Kasha, but Nomad gives him a dagger to the throat. With Damnil and Sho dead, the valley is safe. Workers show up to the farm to help build the aqueducts. Now that all the killing's done, it's time for Nomad to move on. The movie was shot in the Nami Desert in 10 weeks. Director Lance Hull directed this and two other films. Missing in Action 2, The Beginning, and One Man's Hero. He's had much greater success as a producer and has produced 25 major motion pictures so far. He's always loved westerns, and since the post-apocalyptic genre is similar, he decided to make Steel Dawn. He made the film as a futuristic homage to the classic western Shane, which was about an old gunfighter helping a family fight off some evil settlers. Hull liked to keep his business in the family and started Silver Lion Films with his brother Conrad. He also hired his son Brett to play Jux. They shot the film on location in the Navi Desert in southwest Africa. The filming locations were so desolate they had to create roads to get there. For the scene with the sand people coming up from the dunes, they put steel drums in the sand and emptied them out. They put the actor inside, covered the top with saran wrap, and then sand. The actor then pushed their way out. This was one of Arnold Vosloo's first movies. The great Brian James was Tark. This was released shortly after Patrick Swayze became a major star with the film Dirty Dancing. The promotional materials pushed the hell out of that, hoping it would help with the box office numbers. Lisa Nimi played Kasha. She was married to Patrick Swayze since 1975 and stayed with him up until his untimely death in 2009. The movie has a beautiful score by composer Brian May, who also did the post-apocalyptic films Mad Max and The Road Warrior. While I'm not a fan of westerns, 
I just can't get enough of post-apocalyptic films. Even though this one wasn't released into theaters in the U.S., it's become one of the better-known ones over the years. It sported some great production, beyond what you'd see in most low-budget maxploitation. Even still, it's hard to get a decent copy in the U.S. The DVD's okay, but I had to import the Blu-ray from Germany. While I do enjoy the movie, it was a tad vague about its own history. I would have liked some more explanations, like what happened in the war, and why the commanders get chest branding, but they never really went into it. Also, what was up with the Sand People? They have mutants living in the dunes, but aside from that part in the beginning of the film, we don't see them again. Minor nitpicks that they probably would have explained, but couldn't due to budgetary issues. So they just left it up to our imaginations. Calling this a post-apocalyptic roadhouse isn't too far off. The film does share a lot of similarities. Mysterious guy who only goes by one name. He's hired to defend slash fix up a location. The guy who taught him everything he knows is brutally murdered. Meditation. The main bad guy tries to hire him, and then later wants him killed when he refuses. And he hits it off with a blonde girl with big hair. Sitting a little exercise tonight. Uh, 